Hello and welcome back to my Factorial 1.0 tutorial. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me. And we are right back where we left off uh, yesterday. And I got some really good feedback on last episode. I really appreciate your guys' feedback and support uh, on, on these videos and all my videos. And uh, I want to try to take into account as much of it as I can and uh, you know, kind of build on what you guys have suggested and just improve these each and every episode. Uh, so a few suggestions really quick people have which I do want to touch on here is uh, showing off uh, belt and splitter and inserter mechanics with actual items like in use uh, would probably explain them a bit better than me just saying it verbally and I completely agree I will try my best to do that uh, in fact though later tonight I am doing a standalone tutorial uh, covering those exact things on their own uh, without any other uh, information overload of anything else is going to be specifically on those mechanics so keep an eye out for that uh, and then also I think I still need to just find a better pace for providing the information because uh, it can still be overwhelming and uh, and such so we will see what we can do about that but let's continue on here and uh, I will I will try my best to explain what I can in the best way I can uh, and, and hopefully make it easier to understand for all of you so we're going to expand our power uh, we, we are not quite, we're, we're barely even halfway, but uh, to be quite honest, this is uh, driving me a little crazy with this flashing no fuel icon, and I can uh, obviously certainly just insert fuel and have that go away, but I think uh, expanding the power here is not a bad idea, uh, because uh, one really nice thing about how power works, uh, at least steam power in Factorio, is uh, that it will only work as much as it needs to, and only consume uh, in amount equal to how much is working. So uh, while these two were enough, we are adding these as well, and it is consuming fuel, but uh, all of it together is basically working as hard as these two were uh, by themselves, if that makes sense. So we're not necessarily consuming a ton more resources. Uh, like for example, if these two didn't need to work at all, and they were just powered off, uh, that this wouldn't really be burning fuel at all. So uh, not a huge loss there. Uh, but what we really would like to do today, what I would really like to do today, is get some uh, automation science production set up. Because handcrafting this is becoming uh, a bit of a pain, a bit tiresome. Uh, so, we have some very basic belt production we set up here last time. Uh, and you can kind of see splitter mechanics in use here with actual items. Uh, which hopefully gives a bit of a better idea of how they work. But as we continue through, I will uh, explain it when I do use them. And uh, I did explain the separate lanes of belts here. Uh, I will very briefly touch on inserters right now. Like I said, there will be a standalone tutorial with that. Uh, but inserters work in a very specific way, which is that uh, when they grab items, they have a preference to grab from the close side of the belt. As you can see, as we watch these inserters work in front of us here, uh, you'll notice they are only grabbing from the side of the belt that is right in front of them. Uh, now, if it does run out of materials, it will certainly grab from the farther side, but as long as there are materials close to it, it will always grab from this close side. So, uh, if you end up with belts like this where they seem uh, unbalanced, uh, it's just because of how inserters work in the game, and uh, there shouldn't be much worry for you because even if one side runs out, uh, they will grab from the other side without a problem. Uh, on, in contrary to that, though, uh, inserters outputting, so putting onto a belt, uh, they have only one thing they will do, and they will only place on the outside of the belt. You can see he is trying to place on this far side from him, this uh, this one right next to me, this far side from the inserter, uh, and, and that is all they will do. That There's no preference involved or option. Uh, they will only place on this far side of the belt, and this is a mechanic that is very important to keep in mind uh, when you build things, and we will be taking advantage of that. So I will go into that, you know, m more in detail in my standalone tutorial, but that is uh, generally how inserters work in regards to belts. Uh, and they, you know, if you have belts coming out and you have inserters like this, uh, you know, that can work a little bit uh, differently sometimes than you may expect, and we will cover that. But uh, let's work on getting some red uh, automation, or like we like to call it in the community, red science produced. Uh, before that, though, we need some copper, of course, uh, because it does require copper to produce this. And uh, we've only set up iron smelting. So copper being way over here is going to be a little bit troublesome to get over, but not too much. Uh, and the copper should be quite simple because it is literally going to be the same setup as our iron. 
Uh, it's going to be smaller initially because uh, for quite a while after you start the game, you need far less copper than you do iron. And uh, that is that is not just, you know, in, in opinion, you, you will observe it as we play through here. In fact, I was just streaming right before this episode and uh, was, was observing that fact again that uh, I was using significantly less copper in my base than I was iron. Uh, so you will notice when I build the copper, it will be a lot of a smaller production area than my iron. Uh, and that is intentional and uh, more resource efficient. Uh, you know, no, no need for me to spend the resources on uh, equal amount of furnaces and belts as are used for the iron uh, because it's just not, it's simply just not necessary right now. So let's get some power poles made. Uh, I do periodically like to check my map just to see if we may be angering any biters. There is this base here. It is a good while before a pollution hits it. And as I touched on, I believe in episode one, uh, biters' enemies will never attack you uh, unless pollution is actually hitting them in their bases. Uh, so these guys will never actually attack me until my pollution hits them. Uh, now they will expand, which means it is entirely possible they will build a new base, say right here, and if that's hit my, by my pollution, those will attack. But this base uh, itself uh, will only send out attacks once the pollution gets over it. It is possible there's maybe a base up here being hit. Uh, I'm going to hope not <laughs> for the sake of our base. I'm going to hope that that's not the case. Uh, but let's go ahead and just run this down, try to create a straight line. As you can see, uh, I am placing these. It appears I am placing these perfectly. Uh, they are being placed perfectly, but that is uh, not me being... <laughs> Uh, highly accurate. This is uh, a feature which I think I again did mention. Uh, you can hold down left mouse button and just walk. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just holding down left mouse button and it will evenly place these uh, to the best of its ability. Uh, so that's what I'm doing there. It's a very nice feature. And we're going to bring this over. And I think... Uh, in order to leave ourselves room for this steam here, I paused because I was trying to figure out what we want to do. Uh, we, we are going to build upwards. Uh, and this is actually going to require a little bit of planning, which I will very quickly go through with you guys here. So this is this feature, again, I want to try to pace out the information I'm giving, but the, the, infra, the amount of things you can do in this game are so vast, uh, and I'm, I'm going to be taking advantage of them uh, just because... You know, it just makes playing the game so much easier. So uh, I will try to do my very best to pace out the information I'm giving. Uh, this is probably going to be the big uh, load of information for today. And that is going to be uh, a very basic form of blueprints and the copy and paste feature. So uh, much like, um, basically identical to uh, anything on the computer in general, uh, copy and pasting, I'm sure you're all familiar with this, whether it be text or whatever, uh, you can, you know, say select some text in Word or, or whatever word processing docu uh, software you have and press Control C and copy it and press then Control V to paste it or Control X to cut and paste. Uh, one really, really nice thing about what the devs have done here is that those hotkeys uh, translate exactly into the game but with uh entities and buildings so what you're going to see me do here is i'm going to hit Control c just like you naturally would uh, of course this probably only applies to windows users i'm not sure what the hotkeys are for mac uh or linux unfortunately uh but uh, linux may be the same i'm not sure uh, so i hit Control c and i get this selector here what we're going to do is we're going to click and drag so i'm going to hold down my mouse button and i'm going to drag uh, and it's going to bring up a selector, as you can see, this green box, and I can select whatever I want. Uh, here I can zoom out with my mouse wheel and select however much I want, just holding down my left mouse button. And I'm going to select uh, this section right here. And you can see there, it's showing everything that is selected under the green box. So you can see every item and the amount of items that are selected. I'm going to release my mouse button, and I now have an exact copy of this. Uh, and why we do this is we're going to use this for planning and spacing of our builds to then be able to build the copper in the correct place. Uh, so my plan here and what I like to do is I like to have four belts of iron generally for my uh, production. 
and uh, if you want a much more in-depth explanation of why I like this mount and every in the amount of pretty much every resource I like uh, about a week or two ago I created a video uh, on my channel it's in the Factorio fundamentals tutorial playlist on uh, the main bus concept and that covers this exact type of stuff I will go into it a bit here but I just find four to be a good amount of production at least for a normal size base uh, so the reason I bring that up is because we want four smelters four smelter uh, units creating iron because uh, obviously we can't really take four belts uh, very well from just this setup, so we want four setups. Uh, and I do like to leave room between them. Uh, there are I certainly could place them like this, uh, but I do like to leave room because it just allows uh, expansion uh, if if you need to, or to the ability to run belts between them. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and place this. We just left click. And it will place uh, what we call a ghost down, or, or in this case, this is basically a blueprint ghost of this exact thing. It's it's not actual item entities yet. It's just kind of a, a well, a ghost version of them. Uh, and then I'm just going to do the same again and again. So this is now three versions of this. This is a fourth version of this. Uh, and then now we can continue, and this will be our first copper smelter. And I typically also do like four of those. Um, eventually, so I will just place these down, and if you do happen to run into a situation where you go to place this over something like trees or rocks or other buildings, uh, and it's highlighting things in red, uh, it won't, if, if you just click to place this, it will not place things where those red items or red entities are highlighted. Uh, if you hold down shift, it will, uh, at least over things like rocks and, and trees. And what this will do is this will uh, mark those things to be deconstructed, uh, which will be done by robots. That's far later into the game. Not going to go into that, uh, but it will at least let you place it. Um, we don't have that issue here, uh, but we have gone and placed those. Now, if for some reason you uh, accidentally like lose selection of um, of y your copy, or like what I did there is I hit Q. Uh, Q is the universal thing. Not only is it the picker tool, which I mentioned, uh, where you can pick items from around you, uh, it's also the universal key to deselect what you're holding. So if I have this, I can hit Q, and it will just take it out of my hand. Uh, that's what I did there. But you don't need to be concerned if you accidentally hit that, because you can just hit Control V again and bring up. It will remember what you had up. On top of that, uh, it will store a list of these. So if I, for example, very quickly, let's say I take a copy of this belt and get rid of it. Uh, I can hit control V and do the belt. But if I hold shift and scroll wheel uh, down, it will bring back up the smelter. It keeps a list of what you have uh, in your, basically your, your copy uh, library. So that is extremely useful. Uh, but anyway, here's our planning down for this. Let's get our copper run. I actually did run this a bit too far since our copper is going upwards. That is a great uh, example of a lack of planning initially, uh, but we're gonna run this upwards here. Now, of course, this copper is quite far away from the other things, uh, but at least we know now that it is in the correct spot. So we're not going to have to be moving things uh, again and again to get things where they need to go. Uh, we can just build it and that is where it will remain. And uh, one, uh, you know, one, one bit of annoyance is it is a long way to run uh, coal, but we do have our belt production. That's why it's important to get some sort of basic belt production going. Uh, so let's go ahead and mine these rocks here. Uh, some of these big rocks, uh, these two don't, but th when you mine rocks, they give you stone. Uh, that big one I mined initially, I believe that actually gives coal as well. So uh, if you're having problems getting some coal or fuel, uh, and you have some of those big rocks around like these. You can see there it gives me 37 coal and 37 stone. Uh, that can be a good source. Uh, but let's go collect some belt and hopefully get this smelter built and some lines run down and at least start working on our automation science. Now, I have not uh, capped this chest. You can take this red arrow here and uh, just click it, move your mouse around and create a limit on how much this can fill up uh, and then just click it again to deselect. Uh, I'm going to do that. I don't think we necessarily need an entire box of belt at the moment. 
Uh, I'm going to build a bunch of inserters though, because we will need these for the smelting. And I'm going to take this coal. Uh, do we want to add more miners? I think this may be enough. Okay, so we're going to take this coal. And the nice thing about these smelting setups is uh, we can easily run this coal through them. And I'm going to show you here how we're going to do that. Also, uh, I, I showed you how to put things on here, but you can clear them with hitting your middle mouse button, a middle mouse button click. You can reassign this, as with all hotkeys, uh, if, if you don't have a middle mouse button or just want it on something else. Uh, you can click these and select what you want. I'm going to put some of the most used things on here. Uh, furnaces, maybe some assemblers, and that should do us for now. So now I can just hit my hotkey, and we're going to place this here. So this splitter, we already explained splitters a bit, but this will send 50% of the resource this way and 50% on this side. So we're now going to take this, and we're going to hit, uh, we're going to run this through here and clear that by holding right click to clear the ghosts. I will go over that more in detail uh, as we get to that point. And as you can see, there's a bit of a trend here we're following is just doing this over and over again. Now we will need quite a few more of these. So we're just going to take this. They do take quite a while to make uh, when we have to handcraft these circuits, unfortunately. But uh, we're nearly there. Uh, this actually should have gone there, the copper. You can easily move that. Let's just send this one more time just to get things straightened out in our head. And uh, this is iron. Copper should go here. And I think we are going to move that copper belt down. Uh, never, like, you, you should not be afraid. Even though I said you need to plan, I, I do believe that it is very good to have a plan. Uh, along with that, though, you should not be afraid to rearrange things. Uh, it's not ideal because it takes time, obviously, uh, and can be annoying to do so. But never be afraid to uh, redesign something, replan something, uh, tear something up and rebuild it. Uh, you know, like I said, I don't like to do that because I just don't like the process of that. Uh, but you should not entirely avoid it. Uh, like in this case, sure, I could have continued to run my copper up there, but that was really unnecessary because our first copper smelter is actually right here. Uh, luckily, I had not actually run the copper itself all the way there since I ran out of belt. Uh, but, uh, you know, just if you have a case like that, don't be afraid to just change your plan a little bit make things a little easier for yourself there now uh, so we're gonna get this run uh, exactly the same Th these are all just copies these are all just copies of the same same smelter uh, pretty straightforward uh, I'm gonna run this over here double check this is in fact the right smelter uh, when you place them all down like this or at least when I do uh, I can kind of get a little confused sometimes as to how many there are or which one is which until the resources are actually flowing through them uh, so this is a bit of an endeavor, getting this set up. Uh, however, once the resources start flowing in, uh, we can actually very quickly get our automation science set up. So here we go. Looks like we are just about out of iron or maybe copper to make more splitters. So we'll need to go ahead and get more of that for ourselves. Uh, do we need a splitter? Probably not. Not there. Okay. Let's pick this up. Let's collect another furnace. Get this burner miner out of there. Uh, these guys are going. This line we can pick up later. Come over here. Make sure our coal's doing okay. It does look uh, very low right now. It's just because it's trying to make its way through all this. That should be enough, I think, for two smelters for a little bit. <clears throat> uh, now, one more thing I do want to mention. This is not a huge thing of information, but uh, an important note is uh, this is not the full length of our smelter. Those of you who are watching who have played the game quite a bit and may not be new and know these ratios, you're probably thinking I messed up. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't. Uh, this was just for initial planning. This is not our full length of smelter. Our smelter is actually going to be uh, quite a bit longer, two, three times this length. 
uh, for the correct ratio. I don't want to go into that right now because I don't want to overload you with information and we don't need to build it that big right now. Uh, but I do want to just mention uh, for new players just so they have that in mind and then for people who aren't new uh, to let you know I, I did not forget uh, this is going to be quite, quite a bit longer. It's going to be 24 furnaces long in fact on each side. And uh, once we get to the point of expanding a little bit and in another episode where I haven't already given you so much information, I will uh, go into why that is the way it is, uh, why it is that number. Uh, but that is really just not important now. It won't be important if you, you know, when, when you start your first game, it's not going to be important for quite a while uh, until you get to that point. So we have our iron line here. Let's get our copper going now these furnaces built, these inserters placed, and uh, I'm only going to build four on each side. And like I said, this may seem like not enough, but you do not need very much copper initially. Not, not until you really start producing a lot of circuits. Circuits do take a decent amount of copper for that cable there, but even then, you still need quite a lot more iron than you do copper. So even though this doesn't seem like a lot, it should be more than enough for a good while. Okay, now we will have to run, um, we will have to run power lines down here. Uh, we're gonna bring this out probably to about here. It's just leave a little room for expansion. Again, our smelter will eventually expand past this, and we'll have to move that belt. But uh, just to get it run for the time being, come down here, and it nearly needs the iron, which is perfect. Okay, now in regards to planning, uh, as I mentioned and as we have set up, we need four belts of uh, iron. And just like we plan for our furnaces, I like to plan for our production uh, buffs. It, it is the way I like to build. It's a very popular way of playing. It's, uh, I think, a good way to keep things organized and uh, efficient. Again, uh, as with all of this, you do not have to play that way. If you want to play... Uh, if you just want to run your resources willy-nilly, whichever way you want, that is completely fine. That makes for very interesting bases. I'm a huge fan of those type of bases, uh, but this is the way I like to play uh, and, and teach because it, it makes the most sense to me, and it helps it helps me keep myself organized. Uh, and again, I did do a standalone tutorial also in my Factorio Fundamentals playlist on this concept, on the main bus concept like I mentioned, uh, which goes into detail about how that really works. Uh, but... What we need to know for now is we're going to have four lanes of iron and four lanes of copper. So the copper is going to come down here. Uh, I'm leaving this here, and I'm leaving two spaces in between these sets of four. Uh, very briefly, the reason for that is so that we can easily, when we need to, run underground belts over them. Because if you recall, underground belts can only reach four spaces. Uh, if we were to make this just eight belts together without a space, uh, we'd have a very difficult time getting resources run past them, so that is the reason for the spacing here. Uh, and we're going to run power up. Now, again, those belts are definitely going to be on our way when we expand these smelters, uh, but that shouldn't be that much of a pain or that much trouble to uh, move. Just simply bring them over a little bit, but that's going to be a little ways off. So now let's move on to red science, uh, automation science to close out this episode. I don't want to make these too, too long. Uh, <clears throat> and this is going to be your first science. We already know how to make it by hand. We already know what goes into it. It's very straightforward. It's a copper plate and an iron gear wheel. And we already made iron gear wheels uh, for our belts. And those just require iron. So it's a very simple recipe. Um, all we're doing at this point I'm looking at this coal, making sure we have enough of it here. <clears throat> uh, all we're doing at this point is just having machines do that for us instead of handcrafting it. it the recipe stays the same. Craft time uh, generally stays the same. The assembling machines, fun fact, assembling machines, uh, level 1 assembling machines, these ones we have right now, actually craft slower than our player does. Uh, but uh, And that's where some ratios really come into play which I think I'll touch on next episode uh, because that would just be way too much information for right now. Uh, but what I will tell you is uh, that we are going to... Let's see here. 
So I want to make sure... How long is this? I'm using the copy tool to measure. So this is 10. So we say like another 10 or 4. What I'm trying to do is, is one thing I don't want to do. Although these are easy to move. My entire production is not. Uh, so I'm trying to make sure I don't build the science in a place where smelters are going to need to go. So I'm going to bring this like... Heck, I'm going to bring this like way out here. Uh, and that may seem a bit far. But uh, it is very important, I think, to leave more room than you think you will need. Because... Uh, things just tend to get bigger than you think they will and, and route in a way that is maybe more expansive than you think. So, uh, I'm building five of these. Uh, this is a ratio I like to use based on their craft time. Uh, like I said, I will go much more into detail on this later on. Uh, but this is, uh, this is a ratio I like to go with, at least start with. Uh, now we we really do actually would like we we we, we would like gears on our bus here. Uh, for now, for a very quick setup, I'm going to just build gears uh, locally at the production of this. Uh, but next episode, what we're going to do is build some gears for this. Uh, in fact, because of that, I'm actually going to move this even farther down. <laughs> we are getting a ways out there, but. This is, I think this is going to benefit us later on, that we're getting us, ourselves this much space. Uh, here we go. Okay, so we're copying here. This was, uh, this is a very common hotkey we use. Uh, what you can do, I covered this in my hotkeys tutorial, basic hotkeys, uh, but if you set a recipe on a machine and you control right click, or sorry, shift right click, uh, you shift right click it, it will copy it. Uh, and then if you hold shift and left click, you can see it's highlighting the thing that's been copied uh, and it will copy to all these uh, when you click on them. And much like uh, collecting materials from things or putting materials in things, you can just drag. So if we reset these, just to demonstrate, we control or shift right click this and sh hold shift and left click and just drag our mouse and run, it will copy that recipe to everything. This is significantly easier, as you can see, rather than going into each one. Uh, this is much, much easier than, uh, you know, having, having to go in. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have our science output on uh, this side here, uh, because eventually we will actually want this to share a belt with the next level of science that comes after it. Uh, so half of this belt, one of the lanes of this belt is going to be this science, and then the other lane eventually will be the science that comes after this. Uh, and you may notice that a lot I'm crafting one at a time, despite there being the feature to craft five at a time with right click. Uh, this is habit, and the reason I do this, and th th this may not make sense, <laughs> this is just the reason I do it, uh, is I'm very impatient. Uh, I like to in, in games particularly, uh, I like to get the things I want quickly. Uh, so crafting one at a time, especially when you make all the intermediates for them, I'm getting each one like, you know, one after the other. So I can I can take one and place it fairly quickly. Whereas if I craft five at a time, it's uh, I have to wait for like all the intermediates for those to craft before I even get one of these. Uh, I know it's probably quite silly, uh, that but that is my reasoning. It, it's not that I that I forget you can do five. It's just a habit I've developed. Uh, maybe not a good habit, but a habit nonetheless. Uh, so we're running power here, and we're going to bring this over. Uh, keeping in mind that this gear assembler I'm about to set up is temporary. We are going to put gears on our production line bus here. Uh, also, you, you may notice that we don't really have much room to add more lines of things here. Uh, we're actually going to be adding different material lines down here. Uh, those won't really come in until about this point, so I'm not really worried about our steam power interfering with that. We have this entire area to create more steam power. Uh, so that is the general plan there. Uh, so this copper is going to come over, and we're going to take advantage of a mechanic, which I will cover much more in depth in my standalone tutorial for belts and splitters and such. Uh, we're going to split this, first of all, because we don't want to send the entirety of this line 
just the science, because we will need this farther down. Uh, so we're going to send half of it for now. Uh, and we're going to take advantage of this side loading, which we took advantage of on our smelting here with the coal and iron. We're going to take advantage of that here uh, and side load. Actually, pull this up so it doesn't get finicky. We're going to take this and do this. And what you'll notice is uh, that much like with the smelting, the copper is only loading onto one half of this belt. Uh, and now if I were to take this belt I'm mousing over away, it's just going to create a turn and then the entire thing will be copper. Uh, but when you have two belts coming, one from each side, it will create a side loading situation. Now if you don't have that, you can uh, still have a side loading situation by adding an additional belt at the end here so it does not create a curve. Uh, but since we're going to have another resource here, gears, uh, anyway, then this works perfectly fine to just do that. Uh, so we're going to have this one be gears again, keeping in mind this is temporary and uh, will be gone next episode. Uh, but for the sake of saving some time, I want to get this set up now. Uh, so let's bring this down. This needs iron, remember? Two iron, in fact. Uh, so we're going to take this, we're going to run over here clear some of these trees. I'm actually, despite having a little bit of a lack of wood, I'm actually glad that we don't have a ton of trees because it can be quite annoying to clear them. Uh, okay, so this guy is going to run here. And this will work. Now, uh, later on, once we get the next level inserter, I will actually be upgrading this because uh, as, as a ratio goes, this requires two iron uh, to make, and one inserter can actually not move this two iron fast enough. As you can see here, uh, when it's highlighting in red, it means it doesn't have the material needed to create it. That's because the inserter can't put two iron in here in the half second that this takes to craft. Uh, so uh, I will be upgrading this inserter later. For now, we can simply just put two of them, and this will be fine for the most part. It's still actually is slightly bottlenecked uh, here, but not nearly as bad. Uh, and this actually is slightly more than half a second craft time because these assemblers craft slower than our person. Uh, in fact, they only craft half as fast as our character. So this is in fact a one second craft time. Uh, so now you can see we have gears on half this, we have copper on half, and we are in fact making red science. And it is uh, it's really, it's that easy. Red science is very simple to set up. Uh, each one gets more and more complicated, each science. Uh, but there you go. Hopefully, you know, if, if, you, if you're if you struggling maybe to get some red science set up, uh, that is perfectly understandable as a new player. And uh, hopefully this helped you though, kind of have a better idea and maybe just simplify things in your mind. A lot of times your brain can overcomplicate things and become overwhelmed, at least mine can. Uh, so maybe just seeing this uh, will help you uh, figure out a, a good way to do it. You certainly don't have to do it exactly how I have, or you're welcome to. Uh, but I uh, need to add that there just so he can get his materials. And I think this is a fantastic place to stop. This episode may be a little longer than I'd like. Like I said, I would I, I would prefer to keep these at about 20 to 25 minutes. This one feels it's maybe about 30 minutes. Uh, so we will call it here. And Red Science, Automation Science is done. Uh, next episode, what we're going to do is create some proper gear production. Uh, we're going to put laboratories, because obviously these are not doing us any good just sitting on the belt. Uh, we're going to create some laboratories uh, to have research happening, uh, add in some proper gear production, and uh, proceed from there. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed and found this helpful. Uh, if you did, uh, a like is appreciated so other people can find it and hopefully uh, you know get some usefulness. Uh, from it and find it helpful as well. And if you're new uh, to the channel, then uh, feel free to subscribe to get you know, notified of all the new content. Like I said, there will be tons of new content, a new standalone tutorial coming out later tonight uh, and much more to come. And if you're new to the game, uh, welcome and I hope you're having a fantastic time and uh, you know can find these tutorials useful and entertaining. Anyway, until next time, uh, leave your thoughts below. Uh, any feedback I do appreciate and do take care guys.